Uh, I've sat and thought about what my dad did for me, and really, there were several really important things that affected my life and probably the lives of many others. I uh, thought when my dad left Russia in about 1914 or 1915, right in there, uh, that was really uh, a gift for me because had I been born in Russia and uh, during the Nazi occupation, I may not have survived, as did millions of others. Uh, so number one was he left the Soviet Union. No, there was no Soviet Union then. It, it was Russia and came to the United States. And then uh, the second most important thing that he did for me was to allow me to get an education because uh, in the extended family, I was the first one that went to a four-year college and graduated. And uh, that was another significant thing that my dad did for me. And another important thing that my dad did for me, which also affected many others, is he received his citizenship papers and his papers were issued to him in the name of Jacob Scar. Prior to that, he was known as Jacob Skaratowski, S-C-A-R-A-T-O-W-S-K-Y. Uh, later on in life, particularly in areas where such names were unusual, and uh, during the, the era of marked anti-Semitism, the fact that people learned that I was Jewish only after they had known me for quite a while. Otherwise, uh, they would have known this the, uh, originally, and that would have affected their opinion. But if they were Jewish, if you met somebody who was Jewish, would they be more apt to, to know you were Jewish? right away, if they had a Jewish name or... Yes, if, if you had a Jewish name, obviously they would know names like Cohen and Levy and Goldstein and uh, Silverstein and a lot of such names. Uh, people know that they're Jewish even though they may not be, but they assume they are. But so you would be more apt to tell a friend who you knew was Jewish that you were also Jewish? Well, I, I would say probably that's true, yeah. And, and then uh, I learned a lot from him uh, in uh, business and in collecting bills from farmers. And I remember one time uh, when I was back from college in the summertime, I, uh, used to go out with him to stores and people and a storekeeper may owe him a substantial amount in fact is and even stopped buying anything from him but still owed him some money and he would stop in and ask him if he could uh, get some money today and the storekeeper would say well uh, I don't think I could do anything for you today come and see me next week, maybe then. And he'd say, okay, and he'd come back next week. And I asked him once, doesn't that make you angry that you have that, you're entitled to it, and you come back week after week? And he says, as soon as you lose your temper, you lose the money. So I learned that, and that helped me a lot in collecting bills from farmers. I collected quite a few bills that were owed to me for five or six years uh, by just being patient. If you're not patient and you turn over for collection, you lose at least a third or maybe a half 
for the attorneys and the the uh, a, the person or the farmer, whoever it is, is angry with you. And my talk is so exciting that Gertie's falling asleep right now. <laughs> when when the the farm was at its peak um, output of of uh, production, when our farm, where. Our farm was a 13-acre farm. It's a truck farm. It uh, we had a, it was a poultry farm at the start. We had 5,000 laying hens. We had a, an incubator that put out during hatching season, which was the winter months, anywhere from 15 to 25,000 baby chicks a week, which we sold to other farmers, and uh, 